Yes, hello. Could you put me through to Peter Gordon at afternoon report, please? Peter Gordon. Hi, Pete. It's Lawrence. Lawrence, how are you? How's New York? Smoggy, steamy, you know, the usual. Listen, Pete, I'm on the mobile at the Annabelle Institute. The R&D labs? The very same. They've just held a press conference. It's not my usual thing, but Sally's off, so I covered. There's something exciting happening here. You might want to pick it up for the afternoon report. Well, you know us. We'd love to get one over the six o'clock, boys. Well, Annabelle say they have something to replace the silicon chip. They're billing it as being as revolutionary as when the chip arrived in the first place, or when the transistor replaced the valve. OK, go on. And I think it's going to be huge. It will certainly affect the markets. There will be some worried faces in Silicon Valley in the morning. Some of the things they're predicting the AI one, that's its name, can do are incredible. Listen, um, do you think you could talk off the cuff about it now? On air, do you mean? Yeah. We could run up a mugshot of you and slot you in about ten minutes into the show. No problem. You just feed me a few questions about what it can do and I'll do the rest. You'll be all right on the mobile? Yeah, lots of battery life. And I'm as clear as a bell, aren't I? Yeah. Great. Listen, call us in five minutes and we'll put you on. Cheers, mate. OK, bye. So, Lawrence, what are Annabelle actually saying their new device can do? Well, we're talking about a replacement for the silicon chip. Faster, capable of holding more information, and according to Annabelle, intelligent. And intelligent? Is, is that possible? It's going to speed up communications around oh, the world. This is interesting. I wonder if John knows about this. Earlier on, when you said intelligent, I mean, does this mean that this is... Hello, John Jones. Hi, John. I've just taken something off air which will interest us. Have you heard that Annabelle launching a new intelligent chip? The reporter had just left the press launch in the States when he called it in, so it's hot. And the implications for our systems are huge. I'll play you back the disc. Hold on. What are your first impressions? Processing speed is going to be wow, this looks superb. I'll see if Jenny's around in Sydney. She should be involved in this. We might catch her if she's working late. Hold on a minute. Hi, this is Jenny Waterman. I'm not here right now. To access de-restricted files, key Go File now. To leave a message, select Go Record. Thanks for calling. Jenny, John Jones in England. I'm about to send you a news piece we've just recorded. Have a look at it and call me back as soon as you can. Thanks. Martin, I've left a message with Jenny. Now, you'll be here in the morning. We'll get together on a video conference line and progress the situation then. Or in the meantime, can you have a look at this document this afternoon? It's this month's. OK, send it down. Oh, I'd better be off. Rachel's playing up and you know what that means. Oh, I know what you mean. See you in the morning. OK, cheers. TV off.
You're watching Sleepcore, Pleasant Dreams. Thank you for purchasing the Nextel i1000 Plus. It's a digital cellular phone, text and numeric pager, and digital two-way radio complete with advanced features that make it the most efficient communications tool for business professionals. The dynamic features of the i1000 Plus can make you more productive than ever before. We'll walk you through each feature to help you get started. And be sure to reference the user guide for more information. Well, Bob, it's a pleasure to have you join our team. Glad to be here. Let me introduce you to Claire, because she's the one who really runs this place. Claire! <laughs> if you get a minute, could you please teach Bob here the ropes? I'd be glad to. Thank How you, you doing, yeah. Bob? You Claire. It. Nice to meet you. Well, one of the first things you're going to have to learn about is this, the Nextel i1000 Plus. A cell phone? Mm-hmm. Why is this so important? Well, when you learn to use that one, your job will be much easier. Great. How do I get started? Attaching and charging the battery. To get started, you'll need to attach your battery and charge it. First, position the battery so the M logo is facing up. Next, align the battery as shown. Then, press down on the battery until you hear the latch click. To charge the battery, first position the I-1000 Plus facing you and the M logo on the connector facing you. Plug the connector into the bottom of the phone. 
Flip open the prongs and plug the charger into an AC outlet. You'll see three bars on the battery strength indicator when the phone is fully charged. A new battery needs to be fully charged for three hours to maximize the standby and talk times during the battery's lifespan. Subsequent charges will take less time. The first time you turn on the phone, be sure you're in your local calling area. This will register the phone properly on the Nextel National Network. Press and hold the on button for a few seconds. The LED indicator lights up. The i1000 Plus automatically signs on to the Nextel National Network and you're ready to go. Okay, sounds good. Well, thanks for the update. Okay, my phone's ready. What's next? Well, let's start with the multifunction keypad. Huh? If you had a separate button for everything, the phone would get pretty big. <laughs> so instead, there are menus and option function keys. This is a lot more than cell phone. Yes, it is. Features and functions of the keypad. Many functions are activated by the multifunction keypad. The mode key selects different operating modes, such as phone mode and the Nextel Direct Connect Private or Group mode. The menu key moves through different options available within each operating mode. The option keys select the menu option that appears on the lower right or left side of the display. Use the scroll keys to move backward or move forward through menu options and lists. And when entering text, press scroll to erase text or add a space. The volume list control buttons located on the left side are used to adjust volume levels of the phone. When the cover is closed, these volume control buttons allow you to scroll through your programmed phone number list without using the keypad. The push to talk button is used to communicate via digital two-way radio technology called Nextel Direct Connect. Icons appear on the display to indicate operating features such as signal strength, battery strength, voicemail, and paging. With the i1000 Plus, you can make and receive calls with the cover closed or open. To make a call with the cover open, press the mode key until the screen reads phone ready. Then enter a phone number using the keypad. If you make a mistake, you can backspace by pressing the left scroll key once for each digit. Press the send end button to send the call. This is the area in question. Mm -hmm. now, Angela has those drawings at the site. Why don't we give her a call? Yeah, let's put her on speakerphone. With the cover open, to place a call using the speakerphone, simply dial, send the call, and press the option key under speaker. The client loved the changes. When the call is over, press the send end button again or close the cover. You can make a call with the cover closed, but you will need to have a list of numbers programmed in your phone. Reference the user guide for programming stored lists. When you receive a call with the cover closed, press the option key under speaker to activate the speaker phone without opening the cover. If the phone rings when the cover is already open, just press the send end button, any numeric key, star, or pound to answer. To end the call, press the send end key again or close the cover. If you're away from your phone when you receive a call, it will tell you the number of calls you have missed. And if you have caller ID service, the phone stores the last 10 calls received and sent, allowing you to review, store, or dial them. That's incredible. So you're saying the i1000 Plus is also a digital two-way radio? Yes, it is. It's called Nextel Direct Connect. You can reach coworkers in the local Nextel calling area using the person's private ID. Private ID? Well, it's a unique number that Nextel gives to every customer who uses the Nextel Direct Connect. The private ID number is used instead of a phone number for digital Direct Connect two-way radio calls. Why not just make a phone call? Well, because with Nextel Direct Connect, you can talk to one or up to 100 coworkers right away and at a fraction of the cost of traditional cellular. The boss loves that part. <laughs> <laughs> Nextel Direct Connect. Nextel's Direct Connect allows you to instantly reach coworkers in your local calling area. 
With the push of one button, you can contact them when you don't want to send a page or leave a message. To use Direct Connect Private Call with the cover open, press Mode until the Private Ready message appears. Enter a private ID using the keypad, or when you have a programmed list, you can press the Option key under Name. Next, press and hold the Push to Talk button. Wait for the chirp sound and speak into the microphone. Yeah, great. I'll sign off on the blueprint as soon as this client meeting is over. Release the Push to Talk button to listen. The call ends automatically a few seconds after the conversation ends. Claire, can I get in touch with Simmons right away? We need a sign off on the design within the hour. Well, he's in with a client. Send him a direct connect call alert. You can use the call alert feature to privately alert individuals that you are trying to reach them when they're not expecting your call. Claire? Yeah? What's Bob's private ID? It's 5767. All right, let me program that into my phone list. Oh, by the way, can you help me get the rest of the team together? Mm -hmm. Simmons has requested a meeting. Oh, okay. I'll we'll see do you there. <laughs> okay. Voicemail. Bob, how's it going? Hey, great. <laughs> That's good. You know, I haven't had a chance to check my voicemail. Why don't I do that while you set up your phone list? Okay. Oh, do you have a copy of the Nextel user's guide? I may need it as a reference. It's right here. Hey, thanks. You're welcome. Nextel voicemail takes your calls when you're unavailable. You can set up voicemail from your Nextel phone or from a landline phone. To set up your voicemail box for the first time, from your Nextel phone, dial your Nextel personal telephone number. The system will prompt you to enter your password. You should enter the last seven digits of your Nextel phone number. This is your temporary password. Then, simply follow the tutorial to create your password, record your name, and greeting. When you hear, enjoy using Nextel voicemail, your mailbox setup is complete. When you receive a new voicemail message, new voicemail waiting is displayed, an icon flashes, and an audible notification rings every 30 seconds. You can listen to your message immediately by pressing the Option key under Dial, or listen to it later by pressing the Option key under Exit. The icon will stop flashing. To retrieve these messages later, open the cover, press the Option key under Mail, then scroll to Voicemail using the scroll keys, and press the Option key under OK. The screen displays the number of new and total messages in your mailbox. Press the option key under Dial, and you will automatically be prompted through the system. Eric, has Simmons signed off on those changes yet? Yeah, he signed off. Yes, OK. Call Angela just to let her know the status, and then get everybody together. All right. <laughs> Text and numeric paging. Text and Numeric Paging allows you to receive text and numeric pages on your i1000 Plus handset. Text and numeric pages may also be sent through Nextel's website at www.nextel.com and via email from a personal computer. When you receive a new text or numeric page, you will see New Mail Read on the display. The mail icon flashes and an alert rings every 30 seconds. You can read the message now or later. To view the message now, press the option key under Now. To read the complete message, press Read. Then, you may erase or save the message. To save the message and read it later, press the option key under Later. Text paging is referred to as message mail on your display screen. If the message contains a phone number, you may press send and the number will automatically be dialed. So Bob, do you get it now? You know, it's all starting to make sense. We've touched on the key things you need to know to get started. Remember, Nextel gives you a lot of communications features in one compact phone. For further details on using your i1000+, refer to the user guide or view the guide online at www.nextel.com. And if you need any i1000 Plus accessories, 
Call Nextel Next Day Accessories at 1-800-914-3240. If you have any questions with your phone or service, call customer care at 1-800-639-6111 or dial 611 from your Nextel phone. Thank you for choosing Nextel as your wireless communications provider. You're watching Sleepcore. Media for Insomnia. Uh, give me soybeans. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, scroll up. Buy it! Buy! Next page. Close that, close that. All right, beautiful. Sell! Sell! Sell it! All right, highlight four. Scroll up. Up, up, up. The voice activated wearable computer. Buy it! Baby. It's not just wireless. Uh, hi, Donna. Oh, yeah, the meeting was fine. It's wireless e business. Coming from IBM. I'll be on the afternoon flight. Check outlines. Who needs them? Have a nice day. This is the future of e-business. On September the 23rd, Sega bring you the key to the future of interactive multiplayer gaming. Get a life and get a Dreamcast. Dreamcast is the most powerful games console in the world's history, by far. And it's the first games console that will bring you into the world of online gaming, emailing and World Wide Web surfing. Dreamcast will take you beyond your expectations. Its unrivaled 128-bit technology leaps ahead of current systems in terms of graphics, speed, and pure, unadulterated gameplay. Dreamcast's awesome speed can deliver over 4 million polygons a second, making it look better and play better than anything your TV has ever seen. Fluid animation, lighting effects, 3D environments, and textures appear more lifelike than ever thought possible. In-game audio reaches new heights with a staggering 64 channels of music, voices, and sound effects. With technology like this, Dreamcast will redefine the way you play. The future of gaming is between people, and there are up to 6 billion players out there. Four-player capability is built into Dreamcast. But for the first time in console history, Dreamcast incorporates modem technology. By simply plugging in your phone line, you can put the power of mass communication in your hands. With free, unlimited internet access thrown in, Dreamcast will open up the world of multiplayer gaming. Just think, you'll be able to play the same game, at the same time, against people from across the whole of Europe, each in your own home. Dreamcast delivers new levels of digital entertainment. At the forefront of technological innovation, Dreamcast brings you another first, the visual memory unit. Incorporating a liquid crystal screen, this memory cartridge lets you take your gaming with you wherever you go. Download the programs and data from your Dreamcast, then share them with other players by plugging your VMs together. Dreamcast is on the move. The next generation of technology has arrived. 
As for the games themselves, we've got them all. The very best in sports, action and adventure from around the world are on Dreamcast. Dreamcast, the most advanced and powerful games console in the world. play games why don't we play together dreamcast up to six billion players from abc this is world news tonight with peter jennings in Hollywood this weekend, Sunday will be Oscar Day, and millions of people will watch the movie industry celebrate itself in all of its finery. But elsewhere in Los Angeles this week, there was a smaller celebration that just might make the barons of Hollywood a little nervous. A major online film festival. Now it seems anyone can make a movie. It's just an air of excitement over this whole internet film concept. It's a source of information, it's a source of communication, it's a source of inspiration. It'll become a, uh, a standard form of entertainment. The internet has given me access to every single country in the world. Welcome to the Yahoo Internet Life Online Film Festival. What this event has identified is an enormous amount of interest in this subject, more so than anyone could have anticipated. You can shoot a movie, you can edit the movie, and you can distribute that movie on the Internet. This is revolutionary. We're outside the Standard, one of the hottest hotels in the famous Sunset Strip. It's a whole community of uh, independent filmmakers and, and film viewers. Right now, we're at the legendary and the very beautiful Chateau Mormont, where the old Hollywood meets the new. I'm here because this is the frontier of entertainment. What's at the core of this revolution is cost. When something comes along like these cameras, where you kind of, you're thrown into a kind of energy rather than a kind of controlled, precision. It's really more about the energy. You can just get a video camera and you go off and you can just shoot it on video. It's really interesting to see how good video is getting. So I mean, I'll do whatever it takes to make some, make a story. I'll probably do mine on 35 though, because I can afford to do it on 35. <laughs> you know, we're sitting here talking about this in Hollywood where um, you know, the quote-unquote cyber can, as it's called in The Hollywood Reporter today, is, is getting a lot of attention. I, I think it's going to be an opportunity for us to really invite in, you know, a, a uh, incredible amount of talent that's out there in the world and always wondering how do they get their ideas, um, you know, to a great forum and how do they get into the world of being storytellers. So this is just, it's a platform, it's a place to to show your stuff and for us to, frankly, get to see it. Because if somebody does make a short film, whether they're a filmmaker or an actor, um, it gives us an opportunity to look at it and advance them once again organically into either the television, either into television or into feature motion pictures. We're basically interested in, you know, smart people, good deals in, in the area of internet media. We do not consider you a media company just because you're an internet company. 
I'm going to do a show called Dumbland. We're not just talking about movies, but we're talking about a transformation of television, of radio, of music, of magazines, of newspapers, of all the new media, all experiencing these transformative changes at once. I believe entertainment is going to go through a, uh, a dramatic explosion in terms of people exploring new avenues of how to do it, utilizing the unique functionality of the web. Think about the web as a marketing tactic as well. It's a whole new business. I mean, there's a distribution arm, there's a marketing arm, there's a community arm. We are a production entity for this business. It's everybody's learning as we go forward. The people who are really going to make money in the content space will be, again, the core content creator who hits that you know, out of the park uh, winner. We believe we can use the internet film medium to tell unique storytelling of the natural world. It'll be designed from the audience back in. The very nature of our new medium for talent and content generators is seminally different. Those of us who are producing successfully in what euphemistically call the conventional mediums need not be relegated to the backdraft of this revolution. Online will become a, a vestigial adjective, like when electric lights became, about 100 years ago, just lights. Is the internet killing movies? No, no, it's going to actually rescue them, I think. We're here at the star-studded premiere of Time Code. It's the first digital feature shot in real time. Directed by Academy Award nominee Mike Figgis. Introducing Mike Figgis tonight is the Academy Award winner, Nicolas Cage. I think it's safe to say that uh, Mike Figgis is a, a pioneer. And tonight, he goes even further with Time Code 2000, and this possibly is his greatest experiment yet. Four stories told at the same time on four separate corners of the screen. And, and in this experience, Mike has realized that the future of cinema will involve digital technology and the internet. What a fantastic situation for a filmmaker emerging now to say, well, I want to make a film. What's the best medium? Is it high definition? Is it low def? Is it 16? Is it 35? And they can all end up in some digital format. I do know that this is probably the most interesting period in filmmaking that we're, we're now embarking on. For anybody in the audience that wants to be a filmmaker or is just starting to be a filmmaker, boy, you're so lucky. Real estate has three words, so does film on the internet. And those three words are bandwidth, bandwidth, and bandwidth. Here we are at the closing extravaganza. In Hollywood, nothing is better than an award ceremony. Here, the awards will be announced. Let's go. What this event has identified is an enormous amount of interest in this subject, more so than anyone could have anticipated. Filmmaker for the Future Award to Mr. Christopher Bell for Billy Joe. The short film was a dying art form. But now suddenly, websites are vying for hot short films. The short film and the web have come together. It's an art form and a distribution system that have found each other. And now, people who want to break into filmmaking can do it in a way that gets them an instant worldwide audience for relatively little in the way of money, although it takes a lot of work and a lot of inspiration. Mike Figgis for Time Code. She's not the spring chicken anymore, so... Uh... It'll be very Darwinian because the movies that aren't any good, nobody will want to see, and it's real easy to click to another website. Mark Tapio Kynes for Foreign Correspondence. My guess is that they used to be pen pals or something. Maybe she said she was in love with him. The day will come and we'll tell our grandchildren, you know, Sonny, we uh, once looked at pictures on the internet that were only two inches square. 